Hello, everybody. I'm Matthias Baker. I'm the lead of Steps Suburb Dark Ride team. Um, over the course of the summer, my team and I have been working to put together this little ride that we have affectionately titled the Zimbley's Air V Adventure. As stated before, I'm Matthias Baker. I am Sochi Solorzano. I'm Alex Zvornak. I am Cameron Clark. I'm Christian Roberts. And we wanted to give a huge shout out to our mentor, Tiffany, who's been so kind and helpful over the course of this summer, not only providing us with regular and insightful feedback, but also taking time out of her busy schedule to just answer our questions about the industry. We really appreciate you a ton. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Um, okay, so here you can see an overview of the presentation that we're gonna be doing for you today. Um, it shirks the more traditional structure of presenting deliverables, and instead we wanted to basically run through our story with y'all. Um, and we basically, yeah, we just wanna, we wanna take you on the scenic route all across the galaxy. Um, so our ride is just your typical alien family vacation. All right, so with that, here's the overall layout of the ride. Uh, first on the left, you can see the virtual queue space that will go uh, into more detail later. Then from the uh, right next to that is the pre-show room and that leads into the two loading rooms. And there's a maintenance bay right above it for easy access to the vehicles. And so once the guest uh, loading occurs, they venture through the four main showrooms that you can see there, containing a blend of digital and physical sets for full immersion. So this first area will be our virtual queue based on a campsite in, Star in Stargrove National Park. Guests will enter the virtual queue space through a mountain facade, hiding this idyllic gate campsite from the hustle and bustle of Stargrove proper. From there, they'll be able to explore this RV park in whatever order they choose. After checking in with a ranger, guests will be able to play lawn games with their party or relax in a shaded community area or explore the RV parking lot to see trailers from across the galaxy. They can play and interact with a talking bird or simply enjoy the scenery. This space wall enclosed will also remain a safe and accessible place for guests to explore on their own. Each attraction within this campsite will be ADA compliant. By eliminating pathways and allowing guests to explore on their own, we allow both ambulatory and wheelchair-based guests to explore at their own pace. Any play areas like the lawn play area will have soft ground according to the practices described in ASTM F2479. In case of extreme weather, there are indoor experiences for guests to experience as well without getting wet. In case of an emergency, this space will have three emergency exits so that guests anywhere in the campsite can easily find and navigate to their nearest exit. This is also in accordance with the required exits for our space according to the Florida Building Code. Once guests are notified through their mobile devices, their adventure begins in earnest. They'll meet Ranger Jumble, who will introduce them to the Zimblies. The Zimblies are the latest presentation family at gate, showing off their brand new technology. Zara Zimbley is the matriarch of the family, with a knack of, for describing complicated technical ideas in lay terms. Glick Zimbley is the second matriarch of the family, the source of these complicated technical ideas, always tinkering and playing with anything she can find. Dot is their toddler, a wide-eyed, big-hearted kid just here for the adventures of Gate. And Terry's will round out the family as their lovable and only slightly broken AI assistant. All of these characters will appear throughout the ride in both digital and physical media. Guests will join the Zimblies for a tour of their RV, but when Glick discovers that their presentation notes are back at home, the Zimblies will get in their rocket car and tow the RV along for a quick detour before the presentation. So this is the RV as it will appear to the guest. It's a trackless omnidirectional mover built around the oceaneering revolution system. Guests will load in from the sides as the shield around them will lift in the station. All guests will be able to load into this vehicle as well, as ADA compliant vehicles leave space for wheelchairs and other ambulation aids. The vehicle will be based on a retrofuturistic RV, merged with the traditional camper that you'd find in a place like Yellowstone today. The RV has a class two restraint system made up of a group lap bar. While the accelerations on our ride will likely not be greater than those in the class one area, the, ex the additional restraint will serve to keep guests, especially curious children, from leaving the ride to explore the dynamic show sets. To keep guests safe, we have to keep them in their seats. Pressure pads besides the car's pathways, infrared cameras monitored by operations, and laser monitoring will allow the rider room to shut down in case a guest leaves the ride vehicle. The shell of the vehicle will also serve to limit access into and out of the ride vehicle while the ride is in motion. Once our guests have loaded into the RV, they'll take off for the Zimbley's home planet. To pick up from here, Sochi will take off the adventure further. 
So once guests load into the convertible RV being towed from behind the Zimbley's vehicle, they zip out of the camper garage and hit the open road. Wind in their hair, they head towards Cosmic Peak and their adventure begins. And with that, Glick then commands, and Terry's, take us home. The vehicle enters a long tunnel chamber with swirling colors projected around it as the Zimbley's and their guests are transported across the galaxy. Although, you may notice suspicious glitching through the portal tunnel that just does not feel right. The vehicle then emerges in the middle of a suburban town with very distinct architecture and color from Stargrove. It's a combination of fabricated set pieces, props, and digital screens showing the neighborhood. The Zimblies pull into their driveway and the vehicle stops in front of the screen. Blake then hops out of the car and runs into the house grabbing their meeting notes. Once she returns with the much valued item, they are ready to return back to gate. With the presentation notes in their hand, and now having us have seen that new planet, we're ready to finally open back up our portal and head back down to gate. So Zara yells, Antares, take us back to gate. To which, unfortunately, Dot responds, When we get there, can we get a snow cone? Antares glitching sends them not to, not to a gate, but to a snow planet, miles and miles and miles and miles away. It's a tundratic planet with snow swirling around them and big white fluffy hills. They don't really realize what happened until finally, when they take their bearings and see that they're not at gate, they must realize that Antares' voice activation control has been acting up a little bit. So while Glick is tinkering and tinkering at it, we're going down this snowy hill, almost like a toboggan ride. But as we move further and further, we see something ahead of us that looks like a blank white canvas. And we see it grow bigger and bigger and bigger. But eventually we realize it's not a canvas at all. It is a giant snow hill right ahead of us. And if we don't get this portal to work soon, we're gonna crash into it for a chilly adventure, not the way we thought it would go. And right before we hit the mountain, Glick finally tinkers with it just the right way and yells, Antares, take us back to gate. To which Dot then unfortunately responds. Seriously though, can we get some dessert? Location. Again, the portal technology acts up, sending them not to gate, but to a desert planet. Antares confused dessert and desert. It could happen to any of us really. But this desert planet is not like the others. There's strange walk, rock formations, dust that settles in the air, and very odd shapes contorting cacti every which way. As Glick once again gets to tinkering, we notice that something about this planet, this desert, this wasteland, is just a little bit too peaceful, a little bit too quiet. Strange rumblings start emerging from out of nowhere. The whole room starts to shake and vibrate, and we realize that those rock formations aren't rock formations at all, but a giant millipedious monster that bursts out of the ground, snatching and clutching at the family, and now us as well. We need to get out. We need to get this portal working as quick as we can before it gets, before it gets us. Right when it takes its final bite, lunging right at the vehicle, Glick finally hits the portal just right and yells, Antares, take us back to gate. Now this time, the family's wised up. Zara immediately puts her hands right over, right over the mouth of Dot, muffling her so she can't speak. Mm -hmm. Location. So, the location confirmed, deep space. So after escaping the desert planet, the Zimblies are teleported into outer space. They first start by entering a narrow corridor in which they can see a starry night sky. With projection screens, they can see one, two asteroids flying by. That's when they realize that they are not just simply traveling through space, being sucked towards something they realize that they're being drawn towards a large room in outer space with asteroids swirling around a giant black hole, a big swirling vortex. Here's a representation of the guests in the air V nearly being pulled in. We also have an animation showing the positions and we can walk through exactly the story beat by beat. At position one, the guests are in the narrow corridor where they see the starry night sky and the asteroids flying by via projection. 
They then enter the room at position two, facing the outer wall. This is when they see the asteroid swirling by, even their luggage as well is being pulled away. At this point, they also have their teleportation device ripped from the air V and swirling around the vortex with them. As this teleportation device gets sucked in, this is when they realize they have to get closer and closer to the center of the vortex just to retrieve the device. Otherwise, they have no chance at escape. So with this daring retrieval, they eventually get to position six, where they engage in a tug of war with the pull of the vortex's gravity. After engaging the rear thrusters, they can finally make their escape, where they then enter our exit corridor, where they can then portal back to their final location. Now, to achieve this large centerpiece, we used projection technology with the large sphere in the center of the room. Solutions already exist on the market for large concert spaces, which we could easily adapt to this showroom. For example, we have the Pacific Dome's 40-foot diameter projection sphere. Now, ours will not be quite as large, but still an imposing figure at 20 feet, so this solution is viable. Uh, to make sure it fits in the showroom and to have the large diameter near the floor for both a stable base and an imposing figure, we'll have a three-quarter sphere. So with 15 feet, it'll be able to fit in the room while still having a large diameter. Now, to get this large imposing figure in and out of the showroom, it is made of geodesic triangular panels for easy fabrication and testing, then disassembly to be transported to the site and then installed on site in the showroom from there. Uh, since these panels can also be disassembled, this allows for easy maintenance if needed after the ride has been fully installed. So with this large technology, we can create the imposing figure of a vortex at the center of the room where the family is nearly pulled in, but escapes and portals away to their final location. With that, they say, Antares, take us back to gate. Okay. Nice. And uh, with that, the Zimblies and the guests make it back to the suburbs relatively unscathed. Um, however, upon returning and unfolding the presentation notes that they picked up from home, they discover that they uh, grabbed the wrong thing. Each time through, guests will hear Glick's exasperation as she reads off the title of a different document that they accidentally grabbed instead of the speaker notes. Be it an intergalactic cookie recipe, or maybe it's just Doc's photo book. In the end, it doesn't matter so much because they can just do it again. Uh, so like we said at the top, just your typical alien family vacation. Thank you all so much. And a huge shout out to management and everyone that put this whole project together and the whole team, all of y'all are awesome, but yeah. And thanks everyone who came to uh, see your work today.